I actually am originally the son of a soccer player. My dad came from West Indies, from Guadeloupe. He came here with the soccer dreams, as well as just being able to have a life and get away from his family and everything. Uh, so obviously, I saw him play football, uh, soccer, when I was a kid. And I started with it. The problem is, I was chubby, I was pretty big. I was tall, I was very, very tall when I was young. But I was way too big to play soccer, so they always get me playing defense. Mm -hmm. And also, I really didn't like it because my coaches, that's the crazy part. My coach back then, I, I only did maybe a week of, uh, of uh, soccer as a, as a member of a team. And uh, my coach told me, listen, X, you need to fake sometimes. Like, if there's a contact, you need to fake. And did, he actually taught us how to fake, how to yeah pretend that we were hurt in order to get like a whistle or something and i didn't like it at all and i didn't like the fact that you know i uh, i'm from west indies but i lived in paris my whole life and it's cold here so basically i saw the gym right in front of me it was nighttime lights were on on the soccer pitch but the gym was wide open and i did get in and i saw kids playing basketball and i was like oh i like it and i saw big kids fat kids a lot of kids <laughs> And they were just playing and no one was actually considering the fact that maybe someone who's too tall, too small, too big or too skinny can play. So I was like, maybe that's for me. Wow. So I went there, tried it, loved it and uh, kept on playing until then. And actually my dad uh, stopped playing at, at one point because he came, he actually did a tryout for Oxair, I think. Uh, didn't work out. He wasn't mentally really into like being a, a real athlete and with all the sacrifices and everything that goes with it. So he started to work and everything. And when I got into basketball, he followed me, kind of. And uh, actually, at one point, he became my coach, too. He didn't really know much about the technical aspect of the game, but he was really good at just pushing kids to their limits and uh, helping them actually understand that they can do way more than what they think. Uh, it was tougher for me because I was his son. So obviously, he was always picking on me first. But it was, it was a cool experience. It was a cool experience at the end. So I started like that. Uh, I'm from Argenté. I was born and raised in Argenté in the 95 and uh, that's where I started to play basketball. I actually played there until I was 15 years old. Uh, did Actually I was part of three different club teams uh, because the teams changed and everything over there in Argenté. And then I moved, I was actually at one point I was offered uh, by a Pro A team which is a French first division and a Pro B team to go for like second tryouts or whatever and the coaches actually really liked me but my dad he had them on the phone he told them listen you're not going nowhere i didn't know about it he told the guys ex like my son is not going nowhere he's too young he's not ready or whatever and i didn't even know about it i actually learned about it when i was 18. i was super pissed at my dad that was when funny. was that that was uh, when i was 15 which is 21 years ago so basically, uh, I went from Argenteuil to Ray Malmaison. Uh, back then, Ray was a pro B team. They had Tariq, Tariq Hixé, who played for the French national team, an American guy who, uh, who got the French passport and played for the national team, French national team as well. Really cool guy. I played there, met a lot of good guys, met uh, a coach. To be honest, I didn't really like, it, like him that much at first. He was my coach, Julien Hervé. But actually, we, I learned that, I mean, this guy is insane. He's super, super small. Basketball-wise, he was probably the smartest coach that I played for. But he was very young at that time. And it wasn't easy for him to coach kids that were 16, 17, 18 years old. Uh, and we were actually coming from a lot of different areas of Paris. Uh, not necessarily the best areas of Paris. And, uh, you know, we wanted to be tough. We wanted to be all that. And... But he, he did a great job. I didn't finish the year because I was stupid. Uh, I quit at one point, uh, end of the year. Actually, they went all the way to the final four. It was great. I, I wasn't there, but <laughs> I guess it was great. And then from there, uh, I went to play. Uh, I was close to go to Montpellier, but Montpellier went bankrupt. Uh, I mean, I thought I was close to go to Montpellier. I talked to some coaches over there, and at one point, I received the news that Montpellier was going bankrupt, so I was like, snap, I already have that, ma that many options. And Lorient, uh, which is actually uh, still playing, they're playing in National 1 now. 
Lorient offered me to go there and I was playing with their main team. Uh, it wasn't the same organization. It's like, like you had like Espoir even for lower le level teams, uh, like kids playing at a lower division in order to have more playing time or whatever. So I was just playing with the main team, but it was a great experience. Actually coming from Paris, it was funny because we always think that people from Bretagne are already um, not into color people and you know uh, that their mentality is different and everything. At the end of the day, it was the best experience of my life. Uh, I've met so many great people, never had any argument because of where I was from. Doesn't matter if it was from West Indies or Paris, people just liked me or accepted me for who I was or didn't like me for who I was, but it was because of me. And uh, no, it was it was great. Spent a year there. I loved Guidel Plage. Actually, I thought it would be super cold and and raining all all year long and everything. It wasn't at all. It was great, great experience. I still love going back there right now. And um, after Lorient, I so I got my uh, my high school diploma, my uh, baccalaureate, and um, there I had to decide what I wanted to do. Basically, people told me that I had to decide because in France it's really tough to be able to study at a high level and try to play at a high level. Again, I was not necessarily the greatest at all. Uh, I was a decent player, nothing else. But still, I had like dreams, I guess. I guess. And basically, I didn't want to lose studies because obviously studies is what is helping you make money and survive and help your family survive and, and do good. And again, I'm, I'm from an area in Argentina. I wasn't like living in the projects or whatever I was, I was living right next to it. And actually it's funny because a lot of people felt that back then we had more money uh, that the kids that were playing uh, or living at La Zup or it was uh, Fernand Léger, Jean Guimet, it was a lot of different places. And we didn't have much money. It's just my, my, my dad uh, had, I mean, he had credits and people thought that it was all ours, but we didn't have nothing really. The house wasn't ours. Everything actually we lost.